Y'all show Liz Ghetto. Allegedly. You are now tuning in on your check on your people show. I have Miss Satiria Tay Alexander in the building. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you here. Pleased to be here. How are you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Cool. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Miss Satiria, can you tell me about Satiria Tate before you came Satiria Tate Alexander? Well, Satiria Tate, homegirl, grew up here in the park, uh, lived here my entire life. Uh, that's right. For, yeah. That's it. <laughs> um, I'm from the park. I uh, graduated from Capitol High School, mm -hmm. class of 94. I'm from McKinley. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right I ain't going to hold it against you. I ain't going to hold it against you. We good. <laughs> um, you know, my story is just like everybody else's story. You know, I grew up here. Um, didn't have a whole lot, but made the best out of what, you know, I did have. I was a teen mom. I had my son um, in high school, but here I am today. You know, I've grown. I've learned a lot, and I didn't forget about my people. I'm being here for my people. How was life growing up for you, like, inside your, in your home, like? Single-parent home, I was actually raised by uh, my grandmother primarily. Uh, my, grand, my mother was there. My mother um, helped raise me. I, I was raised by a family of women, strong women. Um, they taught me a lot of values. I, I grew up, of course, you know, around the same thing everybody else grew up around. You know, that was my era, the era of the 90s. Um, so I've been through a lot, seen a lot, done a lot, and here I am. What brought you to this point in your life? Like, what made you want to be the voice for the people? Um, I'm not the voice for the people. Oh. I am a part of the people. I'm still the people. Right. You know, right. you never, you never walk away from who you are. And my people are always going to be my people. I don't care where I am in life. I don't care what it is financially. Right. I'm going to always be you know who I am. I'm that girl from the park that ain't never going nowhere. Right. You know, so what made me do this? Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, 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 my story has evolved. You know, I could have been a statistic. My husband could have been a statistic. But, you know, we, we went on to become homeowners, business owners. You know, we went on to... What they said we couldn't be. Everything they said we, we couldn't do, right. we did it. Right. You know, and we did it without a blueprint. Mm -hmm. We did it without anybody showing us how to get there. So the point now is to not have somebody else struggle. If it's something that we can do to lend a hand, to show somebody, to share some knowledge with somebody, mm -hmm. we're going to do that because that's the only way we are actually going to start to build generational wealth. Mm -hmm. We're going to start to restore our families. Mm -hmm. We're going to start to rebuild our communities. Those of us that have had the opportunity to gain more knowledge, more resources, we got to be willing to give back to our community. So I want to know about your transportation business. What inspired you to start? Actually, that was my husband's brainchild. <laughs> so we were hanging out in New Orleans at my aunt's house and it was Mardi Gras time. Mm -hmm. My husband is that person that he's a visionary. He always kind of looks around and looks for opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we were sitting there. And he was like, hey, what you think about starting a party bus service? And I was like, yeah, okay. All right, yeah, yeah. So I knew he was serious because when we got back home, you know, he started researching. Mm -hmm. And he started finding, you know, other party bus services that were not in our local area because he wanted to bring something that was a little bit newer and fresher to you know, Baton Rouge, this man got on the phone, he was talking to business owners mm -hmm. in Las Vegas and Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, he was really networking all over the country. And believe it or not, people were sharing information with us about the business. And how long did it take for the business to expand? Honestly, um, by the time we started the business, and it took us about six months to get all the information that we mm -hmm. needed to get. Um, to understand how to register that business, to understand how to run it, what insurances we need to get, you know, what kind of contracts we had to do. Um, and we ran with a single bus mm -hmm. for about two years. 
That way we learn the ins and outs. We learn how to, you know, work with our customers. We learn all of the different nuances of running that business. And then we expanded to a larger bus. So then we had two buses out there. We were doing really well. Then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So then when COVID happened, we had to shut it down because you couldn't, you know, run that type of business um, and, you know, social distance. And I see y'all, y'all, y'all promise is to give people a safe ride. That's right. So they, That's know. right. So we had to kind of, you know, in the beginning of COVID, we didn't know which way things were going to go. Right. So we kind of had to shut it down for a while. My husband is not that person that's just going to sit and not do nothing. Mm-hmm. So what this man did was say, you know what? Let me figure something else out. So then we started to move into last mile delivery. Mm-hmm. So we started to deliver um, on box trucks. We used to deliver drugs to pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. So when we started that, we actually expanded and we were able to give other opportunities to other people. So mm-hmm. we would hire people like younger folks who nobody wanted to give a chance this to because they were so young. So in that first year of doing the logistics, we had five trucks out there. Mm-hmm. And then we expanded from there and moved into a larger um, contract with Spirit, which we do, we have a contract with Lowe's right now. So to young entrepreneurs, what would you tell them to, how would you get young entrepreneurs to pursue their business? Like, what would you tell them? I would tell them to do your research mm-hmm. and also use resources that we have here. Like, we have Small Business Association, I mean, Small Business Development Center up here on Southern University's campus. Um, I actually reached out to them, too, mm-hmm. and they were a huge help. Like, they helped us to understand the market. Mm-hmm. They did, like, a market analysis and sat down with us and helped us to understand, like, you know, what the market saturation was here and, you know, some of the other things that we don't always think about when we start a business. That we look over. That's right. And we got to, we got to, you know, when we start our business, not enough to have a good idea, but you got to have a good plan, too. I see that you started a business called Agile. What was your model behind it? Like, what did you live by? So the reason Agile was born is because it was doing a lot of community work, right? Mm -hmm. So what I was seeing is that um, there were a lot of gaps. Mm -hmm. You know, there were gaps in services. There were gaps in collaboration. So Agile was kind of born from that. Um, It is an organization that is set to uh, focus on strategy and community building and also building an ecosystem. So uh, we know that there are gaps in health care, there are gaps in education, there's gaps in policies, there's gaps in community. Our narrative has been so negative. So what we have to do is work on changing it and redirecting and rewriting yes. our own narrative because in the end we have to understand that there are positives in our own community yes. and if we can't understand and realize that and speak to that we can't expect nobody else to do that because a lot of people is mind corrupted like, that's right and nobody is there to stand up and let them know but if that's you, right if you if you can think for yourself and read and research, you'll know a lot of stuff. Absolutely. Like, it's not what they make it. Absolutely. And so that is, that's where Agile came from. Mm-hmm. So the goal is to kind of start to switch and change the culture, right? So we didn't get here overnight. It took us a long time to get to this place. It mm-hmm. took us a long time to understand, like, what is really happening in our community and mm-hmm. why we're here. So our goal is to help redirect back out and start bringing the village back in because the village is what we see is missing. And the village is what it takes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. Because people are so quick to judge, like pastors and all, but if you want to reach somebody, why not go to them? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm glad you said that because mm-hmm. a lot of times we miss that. Mm-hmm. Like, we think that the problems that we have, we could just sit in the room, have a pretty conversation, and it's things are going to miraculously yeah. be fixed. That is mm-hmm. not how it works. Matter of fact, you got to get out the room and get in the community. Yes, you put you in know, the work. Exactly. You got to put in the work. You got to get the boots mm-hmm. on the ground. You got to, you know, have that sweat right. equity, you know, to understand mm-hmm. and to actually start changing and build relationships. Because change starts within us. Right. Period. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I did my research and I seen that you started Baton Rouge Street Team. Mm-hmm. And I read, like, that you was at a demonstration on, like, July 7th in 2016. And you seen that nobody was there to help with the equipped emotion that the people was feeling during the Elton Sterling. That is it. That's protest. true. So That's true. Tell me more about that. Like, 
So to be honest with you, um, and we literally just um, observed six years since then. Mm -hmm. um, that was the start of a lot of things for a lot of people mm -hmm. in this city. You're right. Um, during the Alton Sterling unrest, I was out there um, on the front lines. I saw a lot of young people out there, people my age, that were extremely frustrated because of what they were seeing and experiencing and didn't know how to process that. And there wasn't a whole lot of support for that. Um, so I think that that is what we see every day, mm -hmm. you know, not just in those days of unrest, but we see that in our own communities every single day. Um, so it's important for us to, you know, not just spiral up, you know, when there is something that happens to our community that is caused by something outside of our community. But we got to do the same thing when it's happening inside of our community as well. We have to learn how to be accountable mm -hmm. for the things that are happening inside of our community. What I mean by that is there's a lot of violence mm -hmm. that happens, and we know that uh, there's a lot of factors that you know, contribute to why we see the violence in our communities. Yeah. So Baton Rouge Community Street Team, uh, the reason that we are here is because what we see is the expectation that public safety is only supposed to be managed by the police right. Right. or, you know, the DA's office or the court system. But when, how can we believe that when they killing us? But right. let's, let's, camera. let's deal with this, too. They are, right? Mm -hmm. We see that, and we get really upset about that, right? But then we're going to kill each other. But that's it right here. And if we look mm -hmm. at the stats, we doing a worse job than they are because mm -hmm. the rate that we're killing each other is way higher than anything on the outside. So everything we protest don't even stick. Exactly, because. exactly. So we got to start looking inward, and we got to start fixing the things that are broken in our own communities. Mm -hmm. So we got to start getting real about this. And we got to also understand that public safety is not just, you know, the the law enforcement. But public safety starts with us, the public, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So we know what's going on inside of our houses. We know what's going on in our communities. We need to do something about those things. For example, I hear my kid having a conversation. Oh, I'm finna go do this to him and do that to him. Stop it before it gets to even worse than what it is. That's right. Handle it before it even escalates to that. Yes. As mamas, we got to do a better job of paying attention to what's going on to our kids or what's going on with our Everybody kids. A lot of be time, cool, mama. Exactly, man. Let me tell you something. I, I raised two sons. I wasn't their friends. Right. I wasn't. I was their mama first. Right. I love my kids, nurture my kids, but I wasn't going to uphold them when they was doing something wrong, and straight up. Exactly. So, you know, as a mother of sons, you know, we got to make sure that we keep our boys on track, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because we're not raising them to be little boys. Mm -hmm. We raise them to be, be grown, responsible, mean. respectable men mm -hmm. that protect and provide for their families. Yes. That's where it starts. It starts in our house. So when I see people getting real upset about, you know, what's going on outside or well, what's going on inside, because mm -hmm. we need to touch with that first. Because a lot of people want to be their kids. I mean, they let the streets have them. And when you once the streets adopt you, sometimes it ain't no coming back. Exactly. It's hard. It's really hard. But, you know, a lot of times... You know, we see things that's going on out here in the streets, mm -hmm. and we think, oh, man, that ain't my problem. Well, mm -hmm. it don't affect you mm -hmm. until it affects you. Mm -hmm. So instead of turning a blind eye to what you're seeing outside your door, you need to intervene when you can. Because a lot of times, you know, these kids, they're growing up, and they, you know, start to get into right. these things in our community that, that's escalating. We knew these kids since they were toddlers yes. or babies. Even. And then it just be like... We got folks who, oh, that ain't my child. My child ain't doing it. So, but you don't know. Exactly. You don't know. Exactly. You don't know what's going on with your kid at his friend's house, or exactly. or who peer pressuring your friend, exactly. your kid to do this and that. That's the truth. And then your kid on the news, but no, because you didn't see it. You was too blind to it. Exactly. Trying to be Miss Perfect. Exactly. But on the other side of that too. Mm -hmm. All right. As parents, we gotta also be all right with people that love our kids and care for our kids correcting our kids yes, too we can't get mad every time somebody tell your child hey look get from over there because you break break in you know sister whoever's glasses out of her house or you know whatever don't get mad because somebody's correcting your child you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you actually need to correct your child too yes. we got to move into that we got to yes. start changing these and dynamics. that's part of the village like that if is somebody village. telling my kids something is right i why be mad you can't be because when they stretched out, 
Y'all start GoFundMe's and need them same people who try to keep your child. That's the truth. Home that is the so truth. That is the truth. And the thing is, you know, I've seen all sides of it. You know, I've been on the policy side. I've been, you know, on the front lines. Um, I co-founded an organization called Change. I'm an executive director of them. That's um, communities healing and nurturing through growth and edification. That is primarily a group of uh, families who've lost their loved ones to gun violence. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, oh, it was something that somebody else did on the outside. They lost their sons and daughters, Boy. you know, to other black Probably sons and daughters. That's somewhere. right. So now they made it their mission to come and to, you know, do whatever they can yes. to stop this from happening to somebody else's families. Our, um, our president, her name is... Uh, Liz Robinson. Liz lost her son four years ago. He was a popular rapper. I call him my auntie. Okay, so you know Miss <laughs> Miss Liz. That's my sis. All right. So you know she lost Louis, mm-hmm. um, and he was an up and coming prominent rapper, and his life was cut short just like this right here. Mm-hmm. So we dealing with you know her losing her son, but we also dealing with you know these families not getting justice for their sons as yes. well. You know because yes. here this guy was killed in the middle of the day. 3 o'clock p.m. around this time of the day mm-hmm. and nobody saw anything. Nobody saw anything. We got, we got this messed up culture, you know. We we got this culture of what ratting is and what snitching is and all this, that, mm-hmm. and the third. And I understand that, right? Mm-hmm. But there's a difference, right? Mm-hmm. So if me and you out and, you know, we commit a crime together mm-hmm. and I get away and you get caught but you tell on me, you just snitched on me. All right. That's a problem, right? Because yes. we was in this together. Yes. But if I'm Joe Blow or I'm Miss Edna on the corner. And somebody walk up to you and kill you in front of me and I go tell what I saw. That's not the same. Yeah. That's not the same because what you're doing at this point, mm-hmm. you're taking care of the safety of your community. Mm-hmm. You're protecting, you protecting your community. you somebody else from getting That's That's correct. That's mm-hmm. correct. So we got to change that thought process too. Mm-hmm. You know, because... Again, it don't affect you till it affects you. Yes. And so a lot of times, you know, we, we have that mentality. You know, it's me and my three. And then we've seen, you know, 10, 11, 12 incidents that occurred in the block that mm-hmm. we live in. And we ain't said nothing to nobody about yes. it. And then that 15th incident happens to us. Yes. Now we know what it feels and we like. Want people to come and to now we want people to say something. Yes. That's right. So we have to be more proactive, you know, in doing those things. Let me tell you something. One of the things, one of the reasons why BRCST or Baton Rouge Community Street Team is here, mm-hmm. we are here because a lot of times we can stop stuff before it even have to escalate to the police. We're not the police. We don't work with the police. We ain't got nothing to do with that. But what we are is a compliment to what mm-hmm. they do. And when I say compliment, what I mean by that is it is setting that culture and that standard in our own communities and where we, we handle it ourselves. Mm-hmm. With Baton Rouge Street Team, who all do you allow to come in and work with you guys? Like for us convicted felons, people who then did hard labor time just for Abs- things, you know. I'm glad you asked that question. So the people that we bring in mm-hmm. are people that's from the community. Yes, some of them may have felonies. No problem. Guess what? We all got history. We all got a story. Mm-hmm. So it's no problem with that. Sometimes that's what you need in order to connect with people that's where you have been. So you've already walked that walk. You can stop somebody else from going down that path because you already know what the outs, what the ends, you know, role is. So that's why we hire people like that, and we hire people that we consider um, credible messengers. Mm-hmm. So these are people who, you know, again, have lived in the community. They understand the mm-hmm. community, understand the challenges that we have, and so they already know how to approach those things, and they already know, you know, what angle to to kind of, you know, come yes, come to. So that's why we and hire how, those and folks. How do y'all find those people? Do they find y'all or? Sometimes they find us, mm-hmm. and it's word of mouth. You know, when we're looking for people like when we first started um we just kind of put it out there and people didn't understand exactly you know what it was or they had these misconceptions they must be the people who they that's the you know that's the that's the mayor's office so you know that that's government we ain't government (laughs) we community so you know we were able to get some some good folks you know word of mouth we had some transitions along the way and that's normal but what it took was for us to actually get in here and just start the work and people starting to see the work, to understand the work. 
And so that's what makes it easier now. Yes, because there's some other things, you know. Who Absolutely. And I also have a question about the misconceptions with, I mean, with Baton Rouge Street team. Mm-hmm. What do people misconstrue? Like, what do they get wrong about you guys? Well, the biggest thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> the biggest thing is that we are law enforcement. We are not. Now, we do we do uh, respond mm-hmm. to dispatches. And what that is, like, a, if it's a major crime or a homicide, we are on the scene. But we're not there to investigate. That ain't our job. It's to talk to the family. That's right. We're mm-hmm. connecting mm-hmm. with families. Mm-hmm. We're connected with, in some cases, the victims. We just had a situation last week where that, that was exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, our goal is preservation of life, right? Our goal is to, A, you know, connect with the victim or the victim families mm-hmm. to find out, like, where they are, what what do they need um, as a safety plan for one, and what resources do they need to be connected to um, to kind of move them from that situation yes. that they're in. Mm-hmm. So our goal is not to go out there and do any investigations at all. Not That's, to catch the killer, but no, just to we are not a task force. To the family. That's right, we are not a task force. That's what I feel in the gap. Exactly. Like if I got a one parent feeling like this and another one. We all come together. And exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And sometimes that's 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 it. You know, sometimes it may be a misunderstanding. You know, this person right here misunderstood something that was going on with this mm-hmm. person over here. We might be able to do a mediation. You know yes. what I'm saying? Talk to each side mm-hmm. and separate and then bring them together if they agree to that. Mm-hmm. You know, to squash whatever it is that's going on. Right. Because, see, a lot of times people, you know, are out here and they have this conflict. They have these conflicts mm-hmm. that's ongoing. Sometimes this conflict, you know, generational. They got people out here still mad about something that happened to they they, uncle 25, 30 mm-hmm. years ago. You know what I'm saying? So some of that stuff can be squashed. Sometimes it might take the uncle to say, y'all need to stop. To exactly. Except, and then the point get proven, and then now people beefing over hoods and end up in the same place. Yeah, grade man, why are, we bo- why are we out here beefing over hoods that you don't own? And then end up in the same grade you know, Exactly, exactly. It's so just, it's a mindset, and we, we are here to try to help you know, shift their mindset, but also to connect folks to, you know, mm-hmm. to resources. Because sometimes it's people are doing what they're doing because they don't see nothing else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't have no jobs or, you know, it's no income or some, something. Because, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I always see uh, Johnny Domino say free the money, and that's part of the problem, too. That's that why you might have somebody who living a more up to par life and do you got little Patrick coming and breaking their car because he don't have this mm-hmm. and he don't know how he gonna get it. He can't get a job because his background. Mm-hmm. He don't have a mama he could turn to. It's, a lot of it is the money is part of the reason mm-hmm. why a lot of stuff go on. It's, I agree. It's the root of all evil. I agree. I agree. So teaching people to do better, how to get done. Mm-hmm. That is something that, you know, we do. We might not be the ones directly, but we can connect them to somebody who do. Yes. One of the things that we are also doing is building relationships outside of our community. Mm-hmm. Like you said earlier, you might have somebody that is doing good, they got their own mm-hmm. business, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But sometimes it just takes that person to become a mentor to somebody yep. and show them how to get yes. there. So we also seek in po- partnerships with people who, mm-hmm. you know, have that capacity to to do the mentorships or to even hire people, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, whatever it takes. That's what we are trying yes. to pull in so that we can yes. start to change the trajectory of, you know, where things are going in our communities. So when we speak on the Baton Rouge Street Team resources, who qualifies for those resources? I'm glad you asked that question. For right now, Baton Rouge Community Street Team has a focus area, and that focus area is 70802 mm-hmm. and 70805. So in the community in that area, mm-hmm. it qualifies for us. Now, more stringent, um, what we also focus on is um, people between the ages of 14 and 30. The reason the ages is between 14 and 30 is because statistically that age group is more likely to either be perpetrators or victims of violence. Mm -hmm. So that's why that focus is there. So ages 14 to 30 Mm -hmm. in 70802, 70805. The reason those are the two zip codes in Baton Rouge that we are focused Mm -hmm. on is because historically Mm -hmm. 
that represents, those two zip codes represent 42% of major crimes and homicides in Baton Rouge. So our goal is to reduce that number. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we are heading in that direction, but we didn't get here overnight, so it's gonna take us some time to get there. It's and it's gonna, gonna take there. right, it's gonna take community involvement yes. also to help us get there. Mm-hmm. And I also wanna know You asked about resources, right? That's nice. So the resources that we bring to the community are oftentimes the resources that they don't even know exist. Mm-hmm. So people know about the traditional, you got food stamps, you got, you know, those things. Huh. But there are other programs too. There are educational mm-hmm. programs. Um, there are job um, opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, there are just different yes. levels of, and we're always seeking out more resources that we bring to the community to connect them to. Mm-hmm. So what we do, we have like two different ways of referring folks Mm -hmm. and um, one of them is comprehensive services so what that is if we connect with somebody in that 15 or that 14 to 30 year age age range what we're going to do is we work with them to identify three smart goals right Mm -hmm. so those three smart goals are goals that they set for themselves it might be I want to start I want to get a GED Mm -hmm. So we'll help them connect to get the GED. Mm -hmm. The next thing might be, I want to get a good job. So they may not have an ID or they may not have a driver's license. So So we'll help help them to Mm -hmm. get that. So the next step we can do is help them to get a job. So those are, you know, those, those are the types of resources, you know, that we help to connect our community to. Um, because again, a lot of times these things exist and they have no idea that they're even out there. Right. Can you explain to me the nonprofit organizations? What do you mean? Like, I, I want to know how they work. Yeah. So a nonprofit organization, and we got a bunch of them. But just because, let me let me be clear on mm-hmm. this. Just because people have a nonprofit organization doesn't mean a they're funded. Right. Or B, they have money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or C, you know, they are going to be able to fix every problem. Because mm-hmm. nonprofit organizations are usually created um, because of somebody's passion in a specific thing. It could be domestic violence. So you might have somebody that has a nonprofit organization for domestic violence. They help domestic violence victims um, get connected to resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, What generally happens is nonprofit organizations have to find funding. Mm -hmm. um, And they find those funding even, you know, either through grants or they may get foundational dollars. Uh, or they may have like angel investors, which is people that may have sponsor. money and they'll sponsor, mm-hmm. you know, certain things. But usually with grants, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, mm-hmm. if you are getting grant money, what happens is you have to meet the specific criteria of that grant. So your passion might be five different things, but that grant may only touch on two of them. So the money that you get for that grant has to go for those two things because you always have to go back and show where you have spent that money, right. you know, Make that's associated with that. That's right. You have to be able to do that. So Ms. Satir, do y'all have, do the back of the streets and have any activities or anything coming up? We absolutely do. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you asked me that. Actually, this summer we have had... Um, a series called Heal the Block where we just kind of do pop-up events in different um, in different parts of our our um, zip codes. Mm-hmm. We just did one under the bridge by McKinley Middle. And you know, we didn't know how that was gonna work out, but it went pretty well. Yeah. It was it, it mm-hmm. actually went pretty well. We had some performers to come out, we had free food, we had connection to resources, we had activities out there for the kids. Mm-hmm. It was a good family friendly um, event and we do that every single weekend. So next weekend we actually have one coming where we will be in um, in Easy Town. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go to Progress Park, mm-hmm. um, and it's just gonna be a good old time. But as you know, we're gonna bring the same atmosphere. We've had DJ Marquise to, you know, he's on the ones and twos for right. us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we have food. We have snowballs. I'm invited. Yeah, you are invited. Come through. <laughs> Um, we have we just we just mm-hmm. kind of bring out the community and connect them. We have um, folks that come out from different organizations that have um, you know resources mm-hmm. to bring to the community that they can connect with, um, and we do that every week. 
after this one, we have another one that will be in Belfair. Oh. Um, and then our last one, which we want to make this one the liveest one yet. Mm -hmm. And we want this one to be citywide. It's going to be at Memorial Stadium. So we are asking if you want to be a part of it, let us know. If mm -hmm. you want to just come out and, and have fun right. with us, just come <laughs> out. I mean, we're inviting the car clubs. If they want to come and they want to do a park and ride, I mean, a park, a park and chill, they can come do a park and chill. The bike clubs can come out. They can do park and chill with us. Anybody that wants to come out and participate, if you got some resources, connect with us, bring it on out there. And, you know, we want to help introduce your resources to our community as well. Mm -hmm. Going going back through Banner Ridge and just giving back to the community, how how do you feel when you're at these events and you know like you know how these I don't wanna say hoods, but you know You can say hoods, we know what yeah, they are. Yeah, like you how do you feel? Like do it make you smile? How do you do it? Does, do it it does, it does because for, for one we are rewriting our narrative because what people thinking now mm -hmm. is that black people can't get together. Our people can't get mm -hmm. together and have fun without it being some foolishness. That is a lie because we can and we have and we will continue to. We're together right now. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, that that for me, I find a lot of joy in that. Mm -hmm. um, in knowing that, you know, what I already know, but being able to show others that, hey, look. When we see this crime happening in our neighborhood, when we see, you know, all this violence that people keep talking about, we got a 6% mm -hmm. of our population that's causing problems. Mm -hmm. The other 94% are just like everybody else. Yeah. We just want to live our lives, protect our families, you know, find joy and happiness where we are, and be able to live our lives peacefully. So I'm glad that we can bring those things to the table. So what is your motto? What you live by? If you could tell a youth anything to live by, what would it be? Integrity. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means absolutely keep it real, keep it 100. That, and when I say keep it 100, keep it real, be truthful, be honest, mm -hmm. but be accountable. Yes. Like you know right from wrong, mm -hmm. do what you know is right. I don't care what somebody else is saying or what somebody else is doing mm -hmm. around you. You do what you know is right. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to literally tell you what right is. You know what right is, so just do it. Live by that integrity. Mm -hmm. Miss Satiria, what would you tell a young black girl growing up in the same community that you grew up in, the same way, what would you tell her? Like, what message would you give her? And by black, young black girl, I mean me. I'm 24, I've been through a lot. I, I experienced a lot, I saw a lot. What would you tell me and other people out there that's like us, It came from where we came from? Set your standard. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is you've been through it, you already know, you mm -hmm. got that experience under your belt, set your standard. Don't accept anything less than what you deserve. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something that, you know, I didn't know when I was young is a lot of times we set the tone. Mm -hmm. So our men, you know, that are connecting with us, we set the tone for it. Mm -hmm. Right now, we think it's the other way around, but we have more power than we think we have. Mm -hmm. So by all means, set that standard, keep that standard, and do whatever it is that you want. Set you some goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, when I graduated out of high school, I ain't have no real goals. I'm going to be real honest mm -hmm. with you. I wasn't intending on going to college. Wasn't intending on doing nothing but getting a job so I could take care of mine. Mm -hmm. That was it, right? Mm -hmm. But I had to get out there and get some life under me. I worked for 10 years. I worked in uh, fast food, and mm -hmm. I worked in retail. Mm -hmm. The last job that I had that I knew I needed to get something better, I was working in a gas station. I was there for three years. Mm -hmm. What I found out is that without me finding a way to better myself, I wasn't going to be able to do better for my kids. Mm -hmm. So I was 10 years out of high school before I went and got some extra mm -hmm. education. Yeah. I went to college, and mm -hmm. I was 27 years old when I went to college. That's old. Everybody in, in class is 10 years younger than me, right? Mm -hmm. But I knew I had to do it for my kids. And college may not be, you know, the path for everybody, and that's fine. 
but find out what your path is. Set your goal for yourself and find out what is it going to take for you to get there. I don't care if it's you decide you want to start a business where you selling paparazzi jewelry. Mm -hmm. Be the best paparazzi jewelry seller you can be, but have your next plan always in sight. Mm -hmm. That may be where you start, but that's not Probably where you're going to finish, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to understand. I didn't know that I was going to be a business owner. I didn't know that I was going to be a college graduate. Heck, I was the first one to graduate high school in my family. Mm -hmm. So all the rest of that stuff, that's extra. Mm -hmm. But you have to set those standards for yourself. you got to set them goals for yourself, and you got to stick to them. Bottom line. What quote would you give me if I told you I was lost? What, like, what would you tell me to lift me up? What can I say to myself to lift myself up? It's going to be greater later. Mm -hmm. Where you are today is not where you're going to be tomorrow. You are the author and finisher of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. So look at where you are today and then think about where you want to go. And you take that and let that be what leads you from where you are today. The only person that stops you from doing what you need to do is you. That was deep. It's the truth. Miss Sad, do you have anything else you want to tell the people? Anything else you want to say? Yes, absolutely. So if it's nothing else that I've said that have touched anybody out there, what I want to say is it's going to take you. You. Why owe you? to start this change and it's going to take all of us to learn how to work together if you don't know what to do if you don't know how to do it contact us like we'll help you get there like we will help connect with you it's going to take especially our young people we talk to young people every day and the first thing that they tell us is well i don't know what to do or i feel like i ain't old enough to do nothing the reality is it starts at your age if it ain't no more than you know being that influence to your peers you got to do what you got to do mm -hmm. so if it's anything i can impress upon you is do what you need to do and step up come out help help your community help your people connect with us i'll give you our information if you don't know what to do you know we can help you start something because we're looking for young people so y'all come on out so we can start to you know in, engage more with you know you all and it ain't you ain't never too young and you ain't never too old so if it's anything mm -hmm. that I want to I want to say, that's what it is. Come and just get started. Do something. And stop worrying about what the next person will do. Don't worry about you. it. Be a leader, man. We got too many followers. Yeah. That's why we see what we see happening in our community right now is because everybody is following somebody else. Too many people. Stop following. There you go. Well, in this case, we ain't even got there yeah. because really what they doing is following. They following yes. trends. You yeah, know? They following what this person saying, what this person the music, saying. Exactly. Their lives. Exactly. Think for yourself. Yes. Period. And what can they reach you at? What is your contact email number? Facts. All right, so contact and email mm -hmm. is info at brcst.org. That's info at brcst.org. Or you can reach us at 877-99. Yeah, 877-99-BRCST. Uh, that's 877-99-BRCST. Thank you so much, Miss Tatiana. I had Absolutely. a great time with you. I'm so Same glad here. you came. I can't wait to interview you again. Thank you. Anytime you're ready, call. We are mm. coming. We are coming because we love this. We love the engagement. And we want to see our people do better. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I want to thank you for tuning in, watching your girl, Worm Judy, on Check On Your People, where we bring people that is for our people.